Wait, well, that? hello. Good afternoon. I am Pastor Rhonda, founder of Celebrate Life Cancer Ministry and the host of Celebrate Life Today. Um, we are here today to hear the story, the testimony, the marvelous work of a Sister Yvonne Florence, um, and uh, she it will be our guest today. Hey, Yvonne, how's it going? Oh, how you doing, Rhonda? It's good to see you. <laughs> you too. Thanks for being here today. Mm, so with no further ado, why don't you just go ahead and tell us your cancer testimony? Well, I want to just start off, you know, not so much. Um, just today is like really a significant day in my life. Um, today would have been my mother's um, birthday. Um, unfortunately, well, I'll say fortunately, she went home to be with the Lord in 2019. You know, so today is her birthday. And, um, you know, so it's a little, it's been a little bit of an emotional day for me. But nevertheless, you know, I know that this is something she would have wanted me to do um, to keep on um, surviving and thriving and doing this work that is so needed. She was a woman of God. She loved God. And so she went to be with the Lord. So I just wanted to put that out front first, um, even before I went into my own personal testimony with um, cancer. Um, and so talking about my story in 2010, no, 2012, at the tender age of 50, I was diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. And as anyone out there can imagine the, the words of hearing them say, you have cancer, it just took me on a whirlwind. And so um, just getting that diagnosis and trying to, um, I would say, comprehend it and understand everything that came with it was really a, a challenge. But one of the things that I was so grateful for, um, grateful for a couple of things was that um, I had a relationship with God. And so my faith is truly what sustained me through it all. It sustained me and it continues to sustain me. Um, I have a loving husband. Um, he was there um, through it all, through the tears, through the, um, the anger, uh, through the surgeries, through just through it all. He was there, you know, aside from God being my rock, he was the second chief in command. He was my rock. And then it was my, my son, you know, my granddaughter, and then, you know, the community of people that I met along the way that I, that were my friends. And so it, it really took me for a whirlwind. But again, I, I got my footing after a while, you know, and so I am so grateful and thankful that I'm here to share this testimony, you know. Yeah. So tell us what, how did you find out um, that you had cancer and then what did you actually go through? Well, I, I, I found the lump myself um, and I was taking a shower and of course, you know, when you go to your appointments, they tell you to do your due diligence and do your um, exams. And so that's what I did. You know, I did my exam and I felt the lump, something unusual. And once my husband came home from work, I, you know, wanted to be like sure that this is something that was there. And so I asked him to feel it. And once he felt it and acknowledged it, you know, it was on to the doctor and from the doctor, um, an ultrasound, from an ultrasound to a biopsy, from a biopsy to um, fast forward hearing the words that, you know, you have cancer. And so the interesting thing about being diagnosed with the cancer was initially they didn't really know if it was breast cancer. And so upon an examination, um, they found out that it was can you know, breast cancer. And it was early stage, uh, which I was very, you know, I was very thankful, not so much thankful for, because I really didn't even understand the language, to be brutally honest with you early stage, late stage, all I knew was they said I had breast cancer. And so with that being said, it was um, just overwhelming 
because so many times um, I have heard that breast cancer, not so much as breast cancer, but cancer, people didn't survive cancer. <laughs> they didn't, yeah. So did you have to go through radiation or um, reconstruction or any of that kind of uh, procedures? So my treatment, and I, I thank God for my team of doctors and, and technicians and my surgeon, my breast surgeon. Um, my course of treatment, what was determined for me was that I would have neoadjuvant um, chemotherapy. And what that, was, that, what that entails, neoadjuvant means that you just, that I would have my chemotherapy before surgery. You know, the mass um, was a substantial size. So they wanted to see if the um, neoadjuvant chemotherapy could um, actually shrink the mass. And so um, with that being said, it, it, it did, it shrank the mass and I was able to receive a lumpectomy. And after uh, the lumpectomy, I received uh, radiation and the radiation, because I was HER2 positive, I received um, a hormonal therapy treatment, which they call Herceptin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was my um, course of treatment. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm so glad you made it through and all is well. Um, yeah. And I believe you uh, reached out and started an organization can you tell us yes, about that? Yes, I did. I did. Um, one of the things that as I um, went through all the different types of um, treatment and had a lot of reflective time to just think about um, things that, you know, were going on and seeing the different women coming in and out of the um, rooms. And it just dawned on me that, you know, I needed to do something more then just go through this treatment, you know? And so I talked it over with my family. At the time, you know, my mother was here and I come from a family of 13. And so it was um, seven girls and six boys. And so I discussed it with my sisters and um, they said, you know, it was a good idea. And so we just started out, you know, just trying to help other um, women, you know, get through um, just early on and trying to establish the organization. Um, there's a lot of um, paperwork and a lot of things that you have to do so that you can um, garnish donations and just be legitimate. And um, early on, we had to establish a board of directors. And uh, unfortunately, my sisters weren't the ones who, um, ended up being on the board of directors because we went through a program that did pro bono work for us. And at the time they said it, did, it just didn't look um, good for everyone on the board to be family members. Yeah, so that was a little disheartening, but nevertheless, I didn't let that, um, you know, deter me, you know, just reached out to some other folk and they said they were interested and so we got the organization up and running legitimately um, so that we could be established as a 501c3, which we did um, gain status in 2016. And so we started out with just giving sock packets into the hospitals, into the chemo suites, where I saw all of those faces um, of those women that were coming in and out of there when I was, you know, the sock packets basically consisted of socks because during treatment, your feet get cold. And so we did socks and other items like tissues, um, lip balm, notes, and an ink pen because, you know, when the doctors are talking to you, there's a lot of that stuff that goes in your head and, and goes out. And while that drip, drip, drip is dripping into your veins, you know, it's a lot. And so we just wanted to do just a little something to say, listen, we're thinking about you. Um, we're praying for you. We, we want the best for you. And so that was our first project. Those sock packets, we just started doing them and putting them in the hospitals until we, we've given, I would say approximately over 5,000, if not more, um, sock packets into at least um, six different hospitals in the Philadelphia um, area and in the um, county of Pennsylvania. 
And so from there, we knew that education was key. You know, in our community, um, we can't say it enough that knowledge is power. Knowledge is power to the point where we have to be knowledgeable about um, cancer. You know, it's wreaking havoc in our community. And the only way that we can get a foot up sometimes is that we need to know uh, about some of these um, treatments and we need to know about clinical trials. We just need to educate ourselves. So Sisters R Us wanted to be on the forefront of that. We wanted to bring education that will empower uh, women who were impacted by um, breast cancer. And not only the women, but their um, caregivers, because a lot of times the caregivers are the ones that are the voice for um, the patients, you know. So we did that and we, we continue to do that. And we wanted to take it another step further. It wasn't enough that we were given the soft packets. It wasn't enough that we were doing the educational workshops for the survivors. We wanted to do more. And so um, we wanted to get into the clinical trial space. And so we decided that um, we would do community um, the research development. And that meant that we would partner with one of the hospitals that um, was well established to kind of talk about and, and learn about clinical trials and get educated and find out what we needed to do so that we could um, be a part of the conversation so that we could be a part of getting those um, innovative treatments and getting them not for ourselves and for our family members that will be impacted by a diagnosis of breast cancer and any other type of cancer. Um, so we, we jumped into that space and because cancer is individualized, we wanted to do something with individualized um, pampering days for women that are diagnosed with zero to four to stage four breast cancer. Um, and this started out because of a, a good friend of mine who I love dearly, but has went home to be with the Lord as well. You know, she fought a good fight and she finished her course. And so um, we started, you know, just doing these individualized pampering days and we give gift cards. You know, going through treatment can be so dark and so daunting that, you know, when you do get a time, a, a time to just breathe, if you will, um, it's good when you can do something for yourself. And so we say, you know what, what do you want to do on your day off? Or when they say, you know what, you don't have to come to treatment. And when you're not puking your brains out, or when you're not dealing with some of the side effects that getting cancer, you know, getting treatment for the cancer is um, taking an uh, impact on you. What do you want to do? And so we kind of designed it so that we let the patients give us input. And so we let them give us input. And so we develop a list and we give them the list and we say your suggestion at the end. So just in case it's not something on the list that they want to do from somebody else's pampering day, you know, we try to grant those pampering days um, if, if we can. And so now we're just really trying to pivot and be online and, you know, just keep going because we know how important this, this work is. It's, it's very important. You know. So what would you say to someone who is newly diagnosed? I would say to this individual that is um, newly diagnosed is don't do it alone. Don't do breast cancer, don't do cancer, don't do it alone. You know, even if you just have to be with one person, that person can just be there for you. And the second thing I would say to this individual is, is don't be afraid to ask for a second opinion. You know, as good and as the doctors are and, and their expertise, but just for your um, uh, clarity and your um, peace of mind, don't be afraid to ask for a second opinion, especially when you're not sure. And especially when you're, you're not feeling like that first individual, that first expert, that first doctor 
has satisfied some of your questions and some of the things that you want to know. And then the last thing I would say to this individual is let folk help you. Let people help you. You know, um, people genuinely want to help you when you're going through a cancer diagnosis. So um, just put your, um, take your cape off, um, remove that S off your chest, and just say, you know what, just open up your heart and receive what people want to do for you. Yeah. Well, wow, that is absolutely awesome. I've never heard anybody say, take your cape off, but especially as African-American women, uh, right. women in general, but especially as we want to be there for everybody, even when we're having a rough time. So um, thank you for saying that, Yvonne. Thank you so much. Before we go, is there anything else you'd like to say? I just want to talk a little bit about um, advocacy, um, that was one of the things also that I was led to do, um, especially when I heard and I saw women and women, especially in the African American communities, being diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Um, I've lost so many different um, friends and acquaintances to uh, metastatic breast cancer, and that's what plummeted me into advocacy. Um, and I just felt like it was my obligation to speak up, to be a voice for individuals that may not be able to speak up for themselves at the moment. And especially because I know that there was a time in my diagnosis when my husband had to speak up for me. I could not even get the words together and he was there to speak up for me. So. In return, I felt like it was my responsibility to do that for others. And not only um, have I been blessed to do um, public policy advocacy, which is going to Capitol Hill, going to Harrisburg to speak to the lawmakers about um, monies for research and different bills that impacted um, individuals and people um, families that are impacted by cancer. Um, I was blessed and still am blessed to be in the research space of advocacy. And that entails just being, speaking from a patient perspective um, about and looking at proposals and being the eyes to look and say, you know what, this may be a great idea and the research looks good, but from a patient perspective, um, just suggest certain things that can basically benefit the patient. And so I'm just real grateful to have been given those opportunities. I don't take that for granted that I'm able to sit around the table with others um, and talk about and be and, and represent patients who and their families that are impacted by cancer and breast cancer. Yeah, so um, you can advocate on, on just about any level. Um, you don't really have to go on to Capitol Hill. You don't have to um, go to Harrisburg. And I say Harrisburg because, you know, I live in Pennsylvania and Harrisburg is our state capital. And you can advocate um, just by, you know, being an heir or just being there for someone that's going through cancer. You know, you can go with them to their doctor appointments because sometimes, you know, you hear what the doctor is saying, but you, you really don't hear it. <laughs> so that's really, that's advocating for that person and saying, you know what, to the doctor or the, um, the healthcare provider, can you restate that in layman terms? That's advocacy right there because the person that's going through cancer, they're so overwhelmed until they really can't um, hear what the um, expert is saying to them, yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. And, and we get so much information given to us uh, at the time of diagnosis and all uh, the 50 million appointments that we have to go to, at least it feels like 50 million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. And so to have someone there to listen for us, to have someone there fighting for laws to be changed and adjusted so that we can make a difference, so that it can make a difference on us as we go through our journey, all that advocacy is so important. Yeah. 
Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, just find an organization that may be near and dear to your heart. And, you know, even if it means making phone calls for them, you know, this is something, some small thing. We don't have to be big. You don't have to do anything big. You can do it from the privacy of your home. And with COVID-19 and the challenges that it has brought, um, it's even more um, easier, a little bit easier to kind of jump in and get your feet wet and um, do a little something, something, you know, and the organizations I'm sure will appreciate it and the patients definitely. It's a big plus for them. Amen. So um, thank you for coming on and sharing with us today. Oh, you're Tell us how can we get in touch with Sisters Are Us with Circle of Survivors? Um, you can reach us. We have a website. Um, it's up and running. Um, we try to update it as much as possible. And that's Sisters Are Us, which is one word, dot org. And um, you can reach us by telephone. If you want to call us at 267-244-6037, um, and you know, email what well, everything uh, any way you want to contact us, you can find that information <laughs> on our um, on our website. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you again. And I'm Pastor Rhonda, founder of Celebrate Life Cancer Ministry. Uh, if you're going through the journey now and would like someone to walk with you, reach out to us and give us a call at 424-258-5433. Or again, you can reach us on our website at celebratelifecm.org. And we look forward to serving you. Until next time, choose to celebrate life. Celebrate life. Life is worth living now. Thank you.